Thank you, Gurvash, for joining today's call to enlighten us. Hare Krishna, dear devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sala Prabhupada. Uh, today, Gurvaraj will continue to enlighten us on the topic the pure devotional service uh, from Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, Madhya Leela, chapter 22, verse 46. Thank you. Uh, I would like to make a suggestion for those of you who pre preview, the sh preview our Zoom talk. Um, those kirtans that you play, I guess they're coming from YouTube. The, the quality of the sound is quite poor. In fact, it's very poor. And uh, I would choose another uh, venue to get your kirtans from because I know this, you can hear it clearly and it seems to be somewhat garbled. Okay. It's, it's like that every day. It's not just, today was quite noticeable. Okay, very much. Yeah. yeah, so pass it on to all of the Zoom hosts. Maybe they can find some place where they can um, mm -hmm. find some really clear chanting. Okay, it should be much. clear and uh, mm -hmm. you know very easy to. Okay, good. Sure. sure. Yeah, this is not from YouTube, Guru Maharaj. It's from mantrabreak.com, But yeah, sure, I'll. Um, mm, pass this on to yeah. Yeah. yeah, it seems like the quality is quite bad. Mm -hmm. Should okay, I uh, the, the chapter we're doing is yeah, some Namrat says kirtans on SoundCloud are much clearer. Uh, okay. There's a suggestion to okay, pick up, up. Yeah, we'll take that suggestion. Thank you, Mataji. Okay, the chapter we're doing from Madhya Leela, yeah, sure. uh, chapter 22 is called The Process of Devotional Service. So it outlines all of the uh, details of how devotional service is uh, working in different aspects of devotional service. And so we'll go into the verse. Oh, yes, good much. I'm just uh, pulling it up here. Okay. Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya. Jaya Nityananda, Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jai, Gaur Bhakta Vrinda, Baba Pavarga Brahmata Yada Bhaje, Janasatara Chuta Sasama Gam Mamaha, Satsangamo Hari, Satsangamo Yari, the Daiva Sadgato, Padava De Se Tvai Jayate Ratihi. Translation. O oh my Lord, O oh infallible Supreme Person, when a person wandering throughout the universe becomes eligible for liberation from material existence, he gets an opportunity to associate with devotees. When he associates with devotees, his attraction for you is awakened. You are the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the highest goal of the topmost devotee, and the Lord of the universe. Srila Prabhupada's reference is from Bhagavatam 10, 51, 53. Brahmani go Bhagavan Ji, Guru Krishna Pratipusari by Bhakti Lakta Bij. This particular verse illustrates some of the more important verses in the Shastras. That the living entity wandering, the word wandering here is interesting because this is what living entity does. It goes from one material situation to another, not only in one's lifetime, but throughout various lifetimes, and here throughout the universes. Karanam Guna Sangosyo Sarasad Jonah Janmisi. 
from the highest planet in the material world to the lowest. The living entity is traversing according to the activities they perform in each life, builds on their collective karma, and adds and then amalgamates with that collective karma and develops the manifestation of the next material sojourn. And that is you get a particular body, you get a particular set of parents in a particular country, and you have a particular personality already there, but it's not uh, fully developed until one progresses on in years. Mm -hmm. So um, we're, we keep getting into these different bodies, life after life. And um, here, this wandering is why is the living entity wandering? Because it's lost in the material universes. It can't find any permanent situation where it could be satisfied. Or even if something temporarily comes up, it becomes uh, pulled out from underneath after some time. Well, here, one who gets the association of devotees, and here it refer, refers to that devotee who is Krishna's representative. And then, of course, in the association of devotees, his attraction to the Supreme Lord is awakened. So this word awakened is very significant because Nitya Siddha, Krishna Prema, Saruka Bunoi, Sravanari Siddhi Chitte, that in the heart of all living entities, pure love for the Supreme Lord exists in its dormant stage. And here is one way that this dormant stage becomes revealed through the association of devotees. And that association of devotees awakens that attraction, which is natural. Krishna, as Prabhupada would always say, to love Krishna is our constitutional nature. It is not something that is brought in from the outside, something that is learned, something that one has to develop. Here, the word awakened is a very interesting one, because in the material world, is compared to a sleep state, in a sense that the living entity is sleeping to their actual nature. So as we sometimes define that people in the material world are sleepwalking because they don't know who they are. They don't know why they're going to where they're going. They're just going because they're propelled in that direction by their created desires. And they always wind up uh, in a situation where they can never find peace, happiness, or distraction from any difficulties. So the material world is like a dream state, Prabhupada said. When we go to sleep at night, we dream. And when we wake, we remember who we are in our waking stage. But while we're sleeping, we don't remember who we are in the waking stage. Well, now we are also apparently awake, but that is another form of dreaming because we don't know who we are in our real state of existence, our real awakening state, that is our spiritual awakening, which is the real consciousness of the living entity. Jeev Jago, Jeev Jago, Jeev Jago, Gopura Chandra Bole, Kota Nidra, Jaya Maya Pisa Chira Kuru. Jeev Jago, Jeev Jago means wake up, wake up, sleeping soul. You're sleeping in the lap of the material energy and she's sucking all of your good qualities everything about you is being lost in the due course of time and you're thinking oh it's so nice being asleep but actually the waking stage is the stage of our natural existence and the association of devotees is the means by which we Awaken. It's the it's the beginning. Through the association, we meet the pure devotee. When we meet the pure devotee, 
And we take formal guidance and instructions from the pure devotee, then it is like getting the sleepiness out of our consciousness slowly, slowly, slowly. We might say sometimes you wake up in the morning and you're not really awake. You're just kind of like moving around and you're waiting to wake up. <laughs> so in the same way, when we first come in association of devotees, at least we're moving out of our wrong, our sleep existence and we're trying to move into the waking existence. And it's a gradual process. And in the association with devotees, hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord under the guidance of the pure devotee. Next verse. Mm -hmm. Prabhupada ki jai. Krishna nali kripakari bhagavan kona bhagyavane. Krishna yari kripakari kona bhagyavane. Guru Antara Mirupe Sikhaya Apane. Krishna is situated in everyone's heart as Chaita Guru, the spiritual master within. When he is kind to some fortunate soul, he personally gives him lessons so he can progress in devotional service, instructing the this person as the super soul within and the spiritual master without. And this is also very significant. Krishna manifests himself externally as himself in the form of the bona fide spiritual master. So the word antaryami means super soul and that antaryami manifests himself as the pure spiritual master externally, which is exactly the same as the super soul within. There's no difference. What the spiritual master is telling the living entity outside, the super soul is telling the same within. Um, generally, due to our conditioned nature, we cannot hear the words of the super soul. So Krishna, as it says here, when he's kind to some portion of the soul, he manifests himself externally as the spiritual master for that living entity. So the spirits, so that living entity can come in contact with him, within. Once one, when one is fixed in Krishna consciousness, as it's mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita, when the mind is completely controlled, the super soul is already reached. When happiness and distress, honor and dishonor, uh, heat and cold appear all the same. There's no difference in the dualities. When one is connected with Krishna within the heart, the super soul. And the super soul is that soft, sweet voice within, but there are many other voices within. The loud voice of the false ego, which is always directing the conditioned soul to try to enjoy the material energy in different ways. So when there is too many people speaking at the same time, it's hard to hear, you know, each one. And the super soul's voice is not the loudest, it's the softest, it's the sweetest, and it's the most uh, pleasing of all the voices. But the false ego becomes so, so strong that one cannot hear that voice. So therefore, when Krishna wants to show mercy to that living entity, he will manifest himself externally as the spiritual master. As it says, the spiritual master is, is Krishna in the mood of service. There's Krishna who is being served and Krishna who is serving. Krishna who is being served is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and Krishna who is serving is his pure representative. Both of them work together to uh, direct and guide the living entity back to the spiritual world. So you see here, this verse uh, shows when Krishna is kind to some fortunate soul and how he manifests his kindness is usually 
is very difficult. But if one has engaged in pious activities in order to uh, reach the goal of life, then those pious activities that we heard from yesterday's discussion will lead one to devotion and service. Mm -hmm. Okay, next verse. Mm -hmm. Naivo Payantya Pichitim Kavayas Tavesha Rama Yusapi Kriti Ridda Mudas Marataha Yon Tarva His Tan Gritim Asubam Viduvan Acharya Jaitya Rapusa Swagatim Vanakti Translation O my Lord Transcendental poets and experts in spiritual science could not fully express their indebtedness to you, even if they were endowed with the prolonged lifetime of Brahma. For you appear in two features, externally as the Acharya and internally as the super soul, to deliver the embodied living being by directing him how to come to you. Purport. This is a verse from Srimad Bhagavatam from the 11th canto spoken by Uddhava after he had been instructed in yoga by Sri Krishna. So Uddhava is saying, even great transcendental poets, those expert in the science of bhakti, cannot fully express their indebtedness to you. Hmm. So here is the indication of Krishna's kindness. As we heard from the previous verse, this is an extension of that same point. And Krishna is very kind to the living entity. He wants to deliver the living entity back to him more than the living entity wants to go. That is not a nice statement just to make a point. It is actually factual. Krishna is always thinking how to deliver the living entities and he uses his devotees, the pure devotees, to come to the material world to accept some difficulty to bring back the living entities to him. And this is the greatest service to Krishna, to bring other living entities back to Krishna, because this is Krishna's desire. He wants to, he doesn't want um, us to suffer, because as a fire, father, loves their, his children. And when the father sees the children are, are misbehaving and causing suffering to themselves and others, the father feels very uh, unhappy or sad. And he thinks, what, what can I do to bring that person back to the right consciousness? So this is the love for, of Krishna for his parts and parcels. His love is pure, his love is equal, as he says in the Bhagavad Gita, Samoham, Sarabhute Shunam Dwesis Trinapriya. Uh, I envy no one, nor am I partial to anyone. I'm equal to all. The one who renders devotional service is in me, and I am also in them. So he, he apparently shows favor to those who render devotional service. But that's not his favoritism. It is simply how he reciprocates on how we approach. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita that he reciprocates according to how we approach him. But that is not, even though he says that, that's not exactly correct. Are we saying that Krishna is saying something different than what he actually means? What he's saying is that he's equal according to how you approach him. And just like in the family, you might also see that, that those sons and daughters that are more that adhere to the father's instructions and guidance become the favorite of the parent. 
And of course, the parent loves all the children, but all those ones who follow the parents' instructions and become successful by doing that, they get the special mercy of the parent. It's not partiality, it's just natural. It's simply reciprocation based on approach. Just like if you hold something in front of a mirror, it reflects the object that's being, being shown. So Krishna will reciprocate accordingly, but still he loves each and every living entity equally. Even the demons are his sons and daughters, but because they go against his will and cause havoc for their, for their brothers and sisters, he, ha he acts in a different way towards them to change them and bring them uh, away from their wrong activities. So he is the perfect parent and the perfect lover, the perfect friend, the perfect, uh, the perfect guide, and the perfect object of devotion. Krishna is perfect in all, all these things. This is his reciprocation for the, for the living entities. So again, you'll see here, these two features are his, his, uh, his love for the, the living entities, himself as the super soul and, exter and externally as the spiritual master. Why would Krishna take time to reside in the hearts of all living entities? You know, he's even residing in the hearts of those living entities that are below human form, such as the animals, insects, birds, all of the aquatics, all of the lower living entities, Krishna is there in the heart. But for the lower living entities, he's simply guiding them according to their nature. So they will... Just like it says, sometimes it says that the animals act out of instinct. But Prabhupada made a point that this word instinct has no meaning at all. It's some created idea. Uh, it's the word that they used just to define something that they can't understand. Krishna is in the heart of all living entity, and he's guiding that living entity to fulfill its needs in that particular body. Uh, I'll give you a practical example of something that I experienced uh, many years ago. I was, um, I was in Nuvrajadam in Hungary, and there was a particular ghat, it was called Vishaka Ghat, it's right near the temple. So I would go out there early in the morning for a japa walk. And uh, many times in the morning, during a certain time of year, there would be hundreds of birds swarming around the lake, flying above the lake in a more uh, helter-skelter fashion, crisscrossing and flying this way and that way. They all would be staying in the one area, but they would be flying around at, at a, a pretty good speed. And it's interesting that they fly sometimes so close together but you see they're flying so fast and there is no pattern to their actual flight, apparently, but not one bird is crashing into another bird. Mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't bang into each other. Why? Because super soul is directing them. <laughs> so the scientists and the speculators, they would say, well, that's just instinct. But instinct doesn't tell you anything. It's Krishna within the heart as super soul. So he's, he shows kindness even to protect and allow for the living entity to live its life out even in the lower species of life. But in the, in the human form of life, he's actually giving uh, regularly directions on how to come to him from within the heart. <laughs> Next verse. 
Saru Sange Krishna Bhakti Sraddha Yada Hoya Bhakta Fala Prema Hoya Samsara Yaya Shaya By association, by associating with a devotee, one awakens his faith in devotional service to Krishna. Because of devotional service, one's dormant love for Krishna awakens. And thus one's material conditional existence comes to an end. <laughs> so this is kind of like a summation of what we've been hearing. The association, faith awakens, devotion to Krishna awakens, then love of Krishna awakens, then one is taktva deham purna janmani naiti mamiti surjana. This is the last life in the material world. One comes back to the spiritual world. Association with devotee. Next verse. Yadrichjayai mat kata do japta sradas tu yakumam. Nair nirvino nati sakto bhakti yogo svasiddhidaha. Mm -hmm. Somehow or other, if one is attracted to talks about me and has faith in the instructions I have set forth in the Bhagavad Gita, and if one is neither falsely detached to material things, nor very much attracted to material existence, his dormant love for me will be awakened by devotional service. Hmm. If one is neither falsely detached from material things, that means real detachment, not just apparent detachment. Well, I'm detached because it doesn't give me any happiness. That's not, that's not real detachment. Real detachment means whatever it is, whether it brings material happiness or not, it has nothing, it has no meaning to me as far as my progress in life. Nor the opposite, one is not, not very much attracted to material existence. So uh, we get two sides falsely detached and not much attracted to a material existence. Then, of course, through talking about me, Krishna says, Satam prasangam mama virya sam bido bivanti ritkarna rasaya nikita. That this uh, talking about him, hearing about him in the association of devotees awakens devotion to him, and one is on the path back home, back to Godhead. So here is the essence of devotional service Shravanam, Kirtanam. Krishna Smarnam, to hear and chant and remember the Supreme Personality of Godhead through the process of hearing and chanting. So devotees must take sufficient time to hear and chant the glories of the Lord. Therefore, Prabhupada has written and published so many books and uh, you might have a particular type of interest in spirituality in a certain way, you can find that in Prabhupada's books. Of course, the essential books are Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, Nectar of Devotion, uh, Sri Yashupanasads, these are the main books. Um, if we, Chaitanya Charitamrita, also. So by regularly reading, studying, hearing, discussing, then, um, then uh, the path to devotional service becomes wide open and becomes a very joyful process. So sometimes going, associating with devotees and just talking about Krishna. When sometimes we get together, we talk about family members or friends or what we did yesterday or the problems in the material world. A lot of times we just lose the opportunity to hear and chant about Krishna. Okay, so we can, uh, let's see, what is our time now? 
Yeah. So we reached the half hour mark. So we'll stop here. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, for this very wonderful class. Uh, with your permission, can you summarize, Guru Maharaj, uh, the points? Uh, I... Uh, just make a very brief, brief summary. Okay, Guru Maharaj. So as uh, you mentioned, like we living entities are wandering from our life after life, from universe after universe. And so once we come in contact with a pure devotee, our love, dormant love for Krishna is awakened and we engage in the devotional service. And, uh, and you explained about the essence of Bhagavad Gita. So it's like listening, hearing and chanting glories of uh, Lord as uh, uh, um, we should engage uh, so that uh, we can perform the devotional service um, joyfully. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, for this wonderful class again. Um, dear devotees, if you have any questions or um, uh, comments or realizations, uh, please do share. Um, you can type in the chat box, you can raise your hand, you can unmute and you can talk. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And turn on your videos. <laughs> yeah, please turn on your videos um, when you have any questions, realizations, comments. Uh, it would be nice. Yeah. Thank you. Well, keep them on. Whether you're speaking or not, just keep on your videos. It's like being in the classroom. <laughs> yes, Sridhavi Mataji has a question. Mataji, please go ahead. Thank you, Siddharth. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Um, as you were giving class, Guru Maharaj, a couple of questions came to mind. You know, Krishna is speaking about how much the association of devotees attracts one to devotional service, attracts one to Krishna and how our love for Krishna awakens and so on. But I'm thinking about those people who come to Krishna consciousness, they even get initiated sometimes and then <clears throat> they just are not able to sustain it. And then after some time, oh, this is too much. Oh, these restrictions are too much. Oh, this is too much. And then they just drift away from Krishna, away from devotional service, away from the association. They make all kinds of complaints about devotees are this, devotees are that, and then they leave Krishna consciousness. So how is it that when Krishna is so attractive, uh, these souls choose to again drift back again to the material energy looking for enjoyment there? Misuse of misuse of independence. Lack of proper association. And not understanding the process of devotional service. Taking devotional service as a means to fulfill one's material desires. Because if you can, because Krishna says, even one who comes to me to for material gain, he can engage in devotional service. So people come for different reasons. But very few actually come to understand the goal of life and to reach that goal of life. That's rare. Manushanam Sahasrishu, which explains in the Bhagavad Gita. So many will come, but very few will stay fixed on the path of devotional service. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is so kind and he's made it so easy. If we follow Chaitanya Mahaprabhu carefully and adhere to his process, he's taken devotional service into an area where it has become so mercifully easy. Generally, we generally the qualifications for executing devotional service is that one has to be brahminically inclined and have brahminical qualities. But Lord Chaitanya has he's he's dropped all the restrictions. Mm -hmm. Just chant Hare Krishna and try to engage in some practical service in the association of others. So uh, when you read Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam, you'll see that ultimately it's very difficult 
process, extremely difficult. But, uh, and Prabhupada addresses that point. Um, there's another feature which makes devotional service easy. And then Prabhupada presents a rhetorical statement in the fourth canto of the Bhagavatam, eighth chapter, where he says, some, some, some persons say that devotional service is very easy, and some say it's very difficult. So then he poses the question, so what is it? Is it difficult or is it easy? And then he answers the question, for those who, who are determined, it's easy. And those who are not determined, it's very difficult. Mm. So then again, where, how do you develop or, uh, determination? Determination is a feature of the will. Uh, setting your mind on a particular goal and working in order to achieve that goal is the principle of determination and accepting the difficulties and challenges on the path towards that goal is a feature that allows determination to continue. And what makes it easy is association with devotees mm -hmm. and chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. What makes it difficult is if we uh, we don't take sufficient association with devotees, or if we uh, put spiritual life in the same category of everything else we do, it's just part of our life. It's the, if it's just part of your life, it'll become, it'll be just something that you'll get something from, but it has to be the part of the life that is the most important. If we don't come to that understanding, we won't make progress in devotional service because it's our nature to love and serve Krishna. So it is the most important from the principle of innate qualities. Our innate qualities indicate that our happiness is only found on the spiritual level, nowhere else. <laughs> And the second part, if I may ask another question, or should I wait for a little bit, Guru Maharaj? Is it, is it in relationship to the first question? Um, not really, no. Okay, then uh, we'll come back then to you. Okay. Namrata. Um, so my question was regarding um, what is the difference or maybe relativity between um, the dormant love of Krishna and uh, uh, a soul falling down? Well, a soul falls down because of acting contrary to their to their nature. In other words, love of God is the nature of the living entity. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema. It's mentioned to love God is natural. But that love, if it's directed towards something other than Krishna, then it causes one to fall down from that relationship. So it's the same energy. It's called the Adiras. Adiras means the original nature of the living entity is to love and serve Krishna. When that same nature is directed towards material things, it develops an attraction and an infatuation for these things. And then Krishna is pushed to the side. So that's the fall down. So we have our independence because we are part of Krishna and he gives you independence and because but this is called misuse of the independence just like now you're you're here 
and you're listening to this class, or you could be doing something else. That choice is yours, but you chose this. So that it means that you use your independence in a way that is beneficial for your spiritual development. So that independence is never lost. But we strengthen our, our desires by cultivating proper association. And then these other desires, which may also be there, become weakened and then eventually vanish. When we cultivate the mood of sadhu sangha, association with devotees, and a, and a desire to hear and chant the glories of the Lord. So that's, that, that's very much wanted. Because if you want to love someone, you have to know about them. <laughs> and so the more, we, the more we know about Krishna in all aspects of his existence, and there's so many, the more we have our natural love for Krishna is awakened. Mm -hmm. Maharaj, in what conditions the love goes dormant for Krishna? Uh, say that again, please. Mm -hmm. In what conditions does the love for Krishna goes dormant? Um, when, it, when we are associating with the material energy, it remains dormant. Or we are, it's still there, but we're unaware of it. That's all. It becomes awakened. If you read the Nectar of Devotion, it tells you how that love becomes awakened by search, by different situations. It's like there's many features about Krishna that are very attractive. And so you might somehow or other come in contact to one of those features about Krishna and you become attracted by that. So that's, that's an indication of that love is being awakened. Mm -hmm simply by that feature of Krishna, something about him. <laughs> okay, Maharaj, I think that clarifies. Thank you. Yeah, just the, the material energy is covering our love for Krishna. That you have to remember. Mm. As long as we think with this body, we're an illusion, and we can never make any progress. But we know we're not this body, that we're, we're part and parcel of Krishna, and our relationship with Krishna is eternal. Then when we act in that capacity, then it starts to, uh, then, we, then that love starts to awaken. We have to always remember that. That's why Krishna, at the very beginning of the Bhagavad Gita, spoke more than 20 verses on the difference between the body and the soul. That's the very beginning of the teachings of the Bhagavad Gita, which are the fundamental principles of understanding higher knowledge. One cannot understand higher knowledge as long as one still thinks, I am this body. <laughs> If you understand who you are, then you can move in that direction and awaken that eternal nature. Mm -hmm. Through hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord in association with the Lord. Raj? <laughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, you were talking earlier about how the Lord is very kind and merciful. And, and we can see so many examples of how he's been amazingly kind and merciful to all of us. But my concern was like, we as humans are only tiny share of all of the living entities on this planet 
and there's hundreds of billions of other creatures like insects and fish and birds and animals. I can't see, I can't see his compassion and mercy for them. So how does that work? Why can't you see it? Because I see for us, we can, there's so many things that we've been given so that we can step towards Krishna or we can step away. But I, I, I can't see what, 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 what mercy there is for the insects and the fish, etc. Well, they have to go through their cycle of life. And as they go from one species to another, then they traverse closer to the human form of life. So the, according to the evolutionary scale, the soul is traversing to one body after another. From the aquatics is the lowest, to the insects, to the creepers, trees, higher up is the birds, higher than that is the beasts, and higher than that is the humans. So, so it's all a development of consciousness. So the, the covered consciousness is, is greater in the lower forms and more revealed in the higher forms. And then higher than that is the different types of human beings. Those who are more enlightened, their consciousness is more uncovered. And the demigods, their consciousness is more uncovered. You go all the way up to Brahma and Shiva, their consciousness is is practically revealed as spiritual. So it's all a degree of covered consciousness depending on the particular body that one has. <laughs> the Krishna is uh, allowing for the different species to move from one. And he's also, you know, giving them what they need. The birds, the, the trees, the plants, everything nature gets what it needs by the arrangement of the Lord. Only the humans interfere with the natural arrangement of the Lord and sometimes cause problems for other living entities and themselves because the humans have higher intelligence. So when we interfere with the natural arrangement of the Lord, who's, who's taking care of all living entities, it appears that sometimes these other living entities are put into difficult situations because of the humans, the humans. But there's no difficulty on their level because they act according to their nature. Okay. Yeah, well, we're the only one, we're the ones that mess up everything. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Vrindavan Nath Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. I accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, Guru Maharaj, many times it's mentioned about detachment from material things. Uh, it's mentioned in verse 50 also. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, Guru Maharaj, many times it's mentioned about. Uh, Detachment from material things. Uh, it was also mentioned in verse 50. But is this not better to focus on using material things in service of Krishna and his devotee rather than that's focusing it. on detach detachment? That's detachment. That's Rupa Goswami's Sambandhi Nitya Sambandhi Krishna Sambandhi Yukta Vairagya Ushite. What is that room? Yeah. That real renunciation is not to give up the usage of material things, but to use the material things in the service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He describes that. Yeah. Um, can you find that verse? That's... Uh, Near Bande Krishna Sambande is the third line of the verse, Yukta Vairagya Uchtute. Okay, good morning. Uh, you can look in Rupa Goswami's Bhakti Rasamati Sindhu or in Nectar of Instructions. You should find it there. 
Okay. Yeah, it's quite a common verse quoted by Srila Prabhupada and the Acharyas. That this, yeah, Anashaktasa Visayam Yujanam Upayunjate Nirbande Krishna Sambande Yukta Vairagya Ushjate. So, where is that from, uh, Lalita? Uh, Can you give us the the uh, context of that verse? Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, first chapter, second first first wave, second chapter, verses two fifty five. Like that. What is the actual translation of the verse? That's what we really need to hear. Anybody have that translation? Anatasa Sakya Visayam. Just uh, just look up verses and try to type in the verse and see if you can it'll come up. <laughs> It's, it's not a verse from the nectar of instructions. Anatta saksa visa yariyata mupa yunjite near bandhi krishna sambani yutta vairagya yunjite. Then there's another verse, there's two verses together. But can somebody get, when one is not attached to anything, but at the same time accepts everything in relationship to Krishna. What's the rest of it? One is rightly situated above possessiveness. One is rightly situated above possessiveness. Above what? Possessiveness, Guru Maharaj. A possessiveness. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's the answer. Everything in this material world has its purpose. So we don't falsely reject these things. We take them, we're just like now we're using computers. Well, computers are material, right? But we find it's a good means by which the devotees can associate with and do many things in Krishna consciousness. So if someone says, well, computers are material, yeah, that's true. But if it's used in a material way, then it brings one away from Krishna. Like Prabhupada would sometimes say, there was one uh, famous uh, spiritualist, yogi. Someone would give him money and he'd say, no, no money. Oh, that is material I cannot touch. So he would refuse. And Prabhupada would say, you give me money, I will take it and I will use it in the service of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Guru Maharaj. Uh, do we have any more questions? <laughs> I don't see any questions, Guru Maharaj. Uh, Sri Devi Mataji uh, has a question. Okay. Uh, yes, Guru Maharaj, if you don't mind, I want to ask that second question that I had in mind. You know, Krishna is equal to everyone. His love is pure for everyone. And on the spiritual platform, everyone is equal. So why in verse 932 of Bhagavad Gita, it is said that even if they be of lower birth, Sriyo, that famous verse, Sriyo Vaishyas Tata Shudras. So why is it that's, birth? That's material. Yeah, but even why materially it should be considered a lower birth? 
In material world, there's no equality. So something is better than others. You can't, the, the, the materialists who try to make everything equal in this world are fools. You can't. Some people are more beautiful than others. You know, some people are more intelligent than others. Some people are more richer than others. Some people are more fortunate than others. And some people, you know, you, you have inequality everywhere in this world. That's the material world. <laughs> if you want to find equality, you have to come to the spiritual platform. So when you do, then all of these material inequalities are vanquished, wiped away, destroyed. Then we see each living entity for who they are, whether they're in this body or that body. But if you want to make you want to make equality on the material level, and then you'll you'll work for a million years and never get anything done. <laughs> It's not there. This is the material world. But spiritually, everyone is, is equal. Hmm. Okay. Is that all right? <laughs> no, it's not all right. <laughs> right. All right. Hold your question. If you th if you think you're a woman, that's a problem. Right. I know. If it, I, I agree that she. You're, about you're you're not this body. If you, you because you're in a woman's body, you're identifying yourself as a woman. Therefore, you're you're acting on a material level. But why does Krishna say even if there be of lower birth, uh, women, Shvaishas, Shudras, he classifies all these as lower birth. These equal to everyone, why he calls them lower birth? Why don't you talk to him about that one? I don't know. <laughs> he, he, I didn't say it, he did. <laughs> <laughs> you have a problem with Krishna, write him a letter or send him an okay. email. Okay. <laughs> put, in a text, put it in a text message. Sign your unequal servant, Sri Devi. <laughs> oh, Krishna Chaitanya. Okay, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> he said it. I didn't say I didn't write the Bhagavad Gita. He said it. But I believe what he said is right. So <laughs> that's my, and maybe that's my problem. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm, dealing with, I'm, I'm here with these young girls who have come to Krishna consciousness, and I want to be very clear, you know, if this question comes up about how just to don't, Just don't bring up these verses. Those are not important. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Thank you. Shamla Prabhu. Guru Mark, please accept Mambula Basis. All oh, glories to Srila Prabhupada. All oh, glories to you. Welcome. Thank you for coming on. You're brightening up the screen. <laughs> it's the lighting, Guru Maharaj. It's definitely not me. <laughs> I had a follow-up question with Sri Devi Mataji's uh, line of questioning. So sorry, I'm going to tug at that one also. Um, so you... I, I, I agree with you, and I like your explanation about inequality in the material world. So there must be inequality in devotees as well. So when you're serving with devotees, is there inequality between devotees? No. And No. Um, if, if, if two people are serving, where is the inequality? One is serving one way, one is serving the other way. Both are serving. That's equal. One, okay. may be in, one may be in this body, one may be in another body. These things are, are external. Devotional service is on the, is on the spiritual platform where, where duality doesn't exist. You can see inequality, but that is, that is, our, that is our faulty vision. 
Right. Krishna is going to take the service offered. He's not going to. He's not going to make a distinction. Well, this person has is a better has a better body than this other one, and therefore their service is better. No. You know, he take, he's he's accepting your devotion. Not so much the service. The service is a means to show devotion. The service is actually secondary to the devotion. The service is a means by which the devotion is exhibited. That's what Krishna looks for. Yeah, as you, as you often say, the mood of service is, is far, far more important than the actual act of service. Yeah, the service is a means. Do you think Krishna needs our service? <laughs> he's got he's got billions of servers in the spiritual world who are way better than all of us combined. <laughs> Each one of them. He's getting all kinds of you know service that we can't even understand the quality of. So it's not so much the service, it's the it's the devotion that the service is being exp expressed in. If you want to please Krishna, or if you want to do something that will further Krishna consciousness in the world, these are things which indicate devotion. If you follow the instructions of the spiritual master, that is devotion. It's not so much the instructions. The instructions, again, are the means by which devotion is exhibited. But if you follow the spiritual master, the spiritual master has a mission. So he's trying to organize things on this level, and he needs certain services done. So if you, if you agree to work according to that and, and assist in bringing those services about, that's devotion. You put your own ideas aside and you work in conjunction with the directions of the spiritual master. That is devotion. That acknowledgement that yes, I'm going to obey your instructions and work in that way, that's devotion. And in the higher levels, when we get when one gets more purified, then one starts to offer a loving feelings to Krishna in in everything they do. We can we sometimes we offer loving feelings when we worship our deity, or maybe when we're um, I don't know. Yeah, when we worship our deity, or maybe when we're chanting our rounds. But when one gets to the higher levels of devotional service, then every act becomes an act of of affection for Krishna. So then, then the devotion manifests itself in, in a very constant mindset. It becomes regular, it's, it's fixed. So on a, on a lower level, lesser level, we show our devotion by how much we follow the instructions of the spiritual master and work accordingly. <laughs> We may not have that loving feeling, but it's exhibited by adherence to the instructions of the spiritual master with enthusiasm. <laughs> is, that, is that clear? Yeah, yeah. I think you pretty much summarized the um, nectar of instructions there for me, Guru Maharaj. How to serve. Yeah, yeah, if you follow the instructions. And in the course of your service, you also get ideas on how to increase the quality and quantity of your service. These are also indications of devotion. If you're just trying to get things done, and that's all, that, that doesn't show much devotion at all. Thank you for that, Guru Maharaj. 
when we're when we're chanting, let me chant in the best way possible. When we're uh, associating with devotees, let me develop those qualities that are conducive to that type of association, which brings about uh, the presence of Krishna. When we're taking prasadam, let me be in that mood of honoring Krishna in the form of foodstuffs. These are all conscious awareness of how devotional service is exhibited. That makes sense? Yeah, very good. Very poignant and uh, six points to follow. Thank you. Okay. You look you looked happy when you started. Now you don't look so happy. What happened? <laughs> I'm just reflecting on my poor service that I'm offering to you and the other devotees, Guru Maharaj. I really need to pull up my socks. <laughs> Well, if you come online every day for our class, that'll help. <laughs> I will try. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, I don't see any questions. Uh, I saw Lalita Gimata. She raised her hand. Uh, I think now she lowered. Um, Lalita Tangi, yeah. You had a question, yeah. Uh, or com uh, comment. Yeah, Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Um, yes, Maharaj, very, very reflective and a nice class. And I just have a comment to say, um, which I heard from you, uh, your lecture, and also um, I don't remember whose lecture, but uh, they are quoting Shila Prabhupada's talking with a, with a reporter, women reporter, which is a very famous conversation. And uh, Prabhupada explains that um, the lower birth here is he's asking uh, that uh, reporter that would you send uh, your 16 year old girl alone for a world tour? And uh, would you have the same feelings um, as uh, when you send your 16 year old boy? And, and also he was telling that uh, when, a, when a, a man makes the woman pregnant and goes away, he be, she becomes a burden to the government. Uh, so he was telling that in case if you want equality, make the man pregnant and, and uh, do, try to do that. I mean, it was kind of, I'm not telling exact words, but that made uh, so much sense because... Uh, by nature, Papa Yoneha is, uh, is have to, we, we can see this, that like I understand your thing that it can never be equal. Although both are um, in their own respective services and what they contribute to the society is in their own way, but uh, it cannot be called equal, uh, right? And this, I was thinking about this, uh, is that? Is that? Yeah, I, I can. I, uh, I can find at least a dozen ways to mention how women are superior to men from a material point of view <laughs> and also from the spiritual point of view. So if you want to take it from that angle, who is the best of all devotees is the Gobis of Rindava. There's no question about that. That's, that's, not, that's not disputable. And uh, uh, I don't, I can't remember, I know where I read it. I don't know if I can quote it, but there's a nice series of statements which show how the women are superior to men in all, in all respects, uh, materially. And Krishna also, the, uh, the, um, Mm. What is it? The uh, Manu Samhita says that the best and most important person in existence is Krishna, and second is mother, and third is father. I mean, how many, we always remember Mother's Day. We always forget when Father's Day it's like, oh yeah, Father's Day. Yeah, oh, we missed it again this year. 
but nobody, everybody remembers Mother's Day. Right? Okay. Um, yeah, there's one particular book. I think I might have, I uh, know, I, I have it in my other library. On the back cover of this particular book, it shows how women are superior to men in all cases. <laughs> but Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, fame, fortune, memory, and he mentions nine qualities. He says, these are the feminine qualities. If you ask a man about something that happened in the past, he can't remember. But if you ask them what was the wife, she remembers everything. It's, it's, it's a fact, right? All right? If you forget something, just ask your wife. She always remembers. <laughs> and so they have good memories. Why do women have better memories? Because they're more attached to their emotions. And the, when you have an, an experience on the emotional level, it has a deeper effect on the memory. Yeah, thank you. Among women, I am fame, fortune, fine speech, memory, intelligence, steadfastness, and patience. If you ask a man to get pregnant for nine months, he can't be patient. He won't, he won't do that. He, he just wants the kid tomorrow. But the women have to wait nine months, you know, and they patiently and, and happily go through it. So, um, if, I don't know, if you want some more Sri Devi, is that enough or what? Can you give a whole class on this Guru Maharaj? So it's permanently recorded. <laughs> yeah. And we can play it for all time for the next 10,000 years. <laughs> Yeah. So disenfranchised for so long and uh, really uh, to build up morale here. <laughs> Does anybody have a copy of Devaki Mata's book? She wrote a book about um, what was that first book she wrote? On the back cover she explains all of this. Um, does anybody remember that book, the name of that book? She's written one on envy and one on uh, false ego, or false ego, she's written. But uh, the first book she ever wrote, if anybody has a copy, just look on the back cover and you can get a whole list of things that women are superior than men on the material level. So well, hang on, Sri Devi. If you still think you're a woman, you're in good shape. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trapped in this woman's body. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know people in this life that I know what gender they were in a previous life. You know, I'm very I'm, certain I must have been I a mean, man, Guru Maharaj. I'm very certain about it. Hmm? I'm very certain I must have been a man in some previous births and I tortured women exceedingly and so now I've come back <laughs> to suffer. <laughs> On the torture of the I must have been a terrible male chauvinist pig. <laughs> Well, you still have time to correct yourself, so. <laughs> Thank Krishna for that. Okay, so yeah, um, don't get a hung up on this bodily consciousness. It's all sheltering relationships. That's the name of the book. Do you have the back cover available? <laughs> yeah, what does it say on the back cover? Can you read it? I think this is the back cover. I can't see it. You want to read? Sorry. Um, Hare Krishna, the Guru Dev. My humble obeisances to the Lord, Sushubha Prabhupada. 
Uh, here it is on a back cover. Um, I think women are foolish to pretend that they are equal to men. They are far superior and always have been. Uh, whatever you give a, uh, or whatever you give a woman, she will make it greater. If you give her sperm, she will give you a baby. If you give her a house, she will give you a home. If you give her groceries, she will give you a meal. If you give her a smile, she will give you uh, her heart. She multiplies and enlarges what is given to her. So if you give her any a rubbish, be ready to receive a ton of garbage. That's it. <laughs> Hare Krishna. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Thank you. Okay. I think on that note, we'll end our class. Sila <laughs> yeah. Prabhupada Ki Jai. Thank you. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. My humble obeisance is at your lotus feet. Tomorrow we'll be on with the devotees from uh, Charlotte, and tomorrow is Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Maharaj's disappearance day. So that will be the topic for the class tomorrow. It begins at 10 after 12 UK time. That's 10 minutes after noon UK time tomorrow. And that way, Namrata won't have to be sleepy during my class. <laughs> she can. Take a look when the class is ending. Have a nice evening. <laughs> I think I should go to sleep now. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. And my obeisance to all the devotees. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare. Guru Maharaj. Thank you for the lovely class. <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Sri Devi. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Sri Krishna Chaitanya. Hare Maha. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> Sama is the mother, not